at Santa Maria High School in California, and what we're doing in this chemistry class today is we're filtering water as part of an RET project. That's a research experience for teachers. I'm David Mann, and I spent last summer at UCSB. Robert Duran is a chemistry student here at Santa Maria High School. He is the vice president of our club. And what he's doing today is he's going to be uh, making a sand filter as part of a chemistry project. Okay, so the objective is to make as clean a water as we possibly can and to remove any large particles. And we're not at the nano scale, but that's the intent, that's the objective of the class is to teach uh, size and scale and to go from very small particles that are dissolved in water and suspended in water and teach the class about uh, the size particles that can be removed with the sand filter. So this is a concrete sand filter. And what we're making today is one out of PVC pipe. The pipe can be obtained at a uh, <clears throat> commercial supply store like an irrigation supply store, not your local handy uh, hardware store, but it's, this happens to be 12 inch in diameter. So this past summer I was uh, doing research at UCSB as a uh, experience for teachers using a concrete sand filter. I actually had about seven of these and one that was PVC. And I was able to remove very small particles uh, and I was surprised that they were so effective. I was actually able to remove nano sized particles using a sand filter. Uh, I have a theory about why that happened. I would expect that the uh, small nanoparticles would pass through the mechanical filtration, but uh, I have a theory that the small particles, the nano-sized particles, were removed possibly because of some kind of electrical charge that was created on the surface of the sand. But uh, normally we would expect uh, bacteria-sized particles to be removed, but viruses, not likely, based upon just mechanical uh, removal. So something's going on in the biosand filter to be uh, able to remove those very small nano-sized particles, which I was surprised that they were that effective. These are effective over a 90% level of removing pathogens. So what Robert's going to do today is he's going to uh, have an extension from the class project, which was to do water filtration using the chemistry in the community laboratory on foul water. And he's going to take uh, this and extend it one time now and have, instead of a small sand filter, we're going to try and make a large sand filter and duplicate what I did last summer with the concrete sand filter. So we have a large 12-inch uh, PVC pipe. And what we're going to do today, Robert's going to prepare the cap that is going to go on top. This will actually be the bottom of the sand filter. We have a piece of PVC pipe that's a 12 inch in diameter cap that can be purchased at a commercial uh, agricultural ir irrigation store. This particular piece uh, costs $69. Uh, grants are available, uh, usually from the State Department uh, of Education, wherever you work, and uh, these small grants can help pay for these materials. For this activity, monies were provided through uh, UCSB and the grant that is supported by research. This piece of PVC pipe, again, is obtained through an uh, uh, agricultural uh, irrigation store, and uh, the funding, again, was from the National Science Foundation for these materials that we have here in the classroom. Um, here, <clears throat> we have to put the primer on the, on the cap to, to seal it when we put it on the, on the filter. <clears throat> you want to do this in a well-ventilated uh, classroom. <clears throat> the uh, setting time is about two hours. There's no pressure per se. So this is going to be a gravity feed water filter. So all you need is just a seal to, uh, to seal off any water leaking. There's not going to be any uh, pressure, so a two-hour time set for the cement is adequate. Okay, what we are going to do now is we're going to insert our uh, plastic tubing into our sand filter, and its uh, inside diameter is a quarter inch, outside diameter is three eighths. So we're going to need to drill a hole in the bottom of the sand filter and insert our plastic tubing, and then strap the the, the, the tubing on the side of the filter so that it stands upright and then we can basically start filling it up with sand and gravel. Here we are at Santa Maria High School the next day and what we're going to do is we're going to place a 3 8 inch uh, 
rubber tubing into the sand filter. Now that we've got the cap glued on the bottom, we're going to take a 3 8 inch drill and drill a hole about halfway through the cap and it's, a, it's going to be at the bottom of the sand filter. So we're placing the, uh, the hole at the bottom of the sand filter, but you can't put it so far down that a person can't reach from the inside and lay a, uh, a, a seal on the inside of the plastic tubing. This is 3 8 inch diameter. We'll place some uh, aquarium sealer. This is 100% silicone seal and it's clear and they use it in aquariums to seal the uh, aquariums from leaking and we're going to place a bead of this sealer around the tubing and then have a student with really long arms who can reach inside of the tube and lay another layer or bead of the silicon sealer around on the inside. So we've got these electrical strappers uh, and we're going to, they're as big as I could get them, they're 10 inch long Actually, these are like, uh, no, these are like 24 inch long, they're 59 cents each. And we're going to put two of them together so we can go around the tube to hold, to hold the, around the sand filter to hold the uh, plastic tube up so that it will uh, stay up next to the pipe.